we have to start establishing this is our flight. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, go get it now. Let's go. Welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Bettel alongside the head coach of your GCU Lopes, Dan Marley. Dan, uh, it's been an interesting uh, turn of events here from our last show, but let's turn back the clock. A day after Thanksgiving, uh, your team wasn't uh, had a no ill effects of tryptophan after a big uh, Thanksgiving meal, taking on Coppin State, and boy, you guys shut them down. Big victory. Yeah, we did a, you know, a really good job. Uh, came out uh, energetic, uh, defensively really good. Um, took control of the game early. Um, offensively struggled a little bit in the first half, but came out in the second half and got it together. And uh, 40 minutes of pretty good defense. Uh, didn't allow them to get the free throw line. Shut down, uh, shut down their penetration. Rebounding was really good. So uh, overall, a very good win for us uh, for the first game at home. Great crowd, too. The students yeah. not, uh, not on campus. I know you talked a little bit about that because the place was packed yet again. It was. It was. Uh, it was amazing. You know, it came out. I didn't really know what to expect because of the students not being on uh, on, uh, in, on campus, and they came out, and the place was packed. So I know uh, our our students. Are, I mean, our team appreciated it, and it's always fun to be playing here, especially we've been on the road for 11 days. But uh, it's quite amazing the crowd that we have night in and night out. Two big guys again. It was Dwayne Russell, 18 points in 31 minutes. Josh Braun contributed 14. Oscar Freyer had nine, and then Darian Clark. 8.6 8 rebounds as well. Yeah, you know, Dwayne's been the constant since he's been back, uh, and I knew he would be. He's our floor general, works really hard, our leader, uh, both competitively and being on the floor and uh, scoring and getting people involved. So Dwayne's been awesome. Uh, other guys have to step up. Josh uh, has, has been there, as you said. Oscar's a freshman. Darian, uh, game in and game out. Uh, not really sure what you're going to get. He's got to get more consistent. And I know turnovers are always something you talk about and want your team to limit, but you guys scored 26 off of 12 turnovers for Coppin State. Yeah, we did a good job of uh, getting our hands in passing lanes. I think Oscar had a, quite a few steals, um, did a good job. and. You know, our, our, one of our strengths is our transition offense, and if we can get steals and uh, get easy basket, baskets, that helps us out. And then uh, also 16-4, uh, to 4, the margin and second chance points. So you guys had some pretty good legs coming back. Yeah, and we got some guys who can get on the boards, you know, Keontae and, and Darian and, and Oscar's very athletic, uh, big guards that can get in there and rebound. You know, Josh has always been a really good rebounder. So uh, that's one of been of our staples is last year is our rebounding, and this year we have to do the same thing. Well, the outcome was a 70-37 victory shutting down Coppin State. That was on Friday. The following Monday, it's SIUE, Southern Illinois University. Edwardsville comes in, and this one was, this one was tough. This one, uh, they certainly kind of... Punched you right in the mouth right off the get-go, and then a tough blow with Josh Braun only seeing 10 minutes of play. Well, you know, Josh hasn't been able to practice. hasn't practiced for a week. Uh, we didn't know if he was going to be able to go. Um, didn't go through shoot-around. Tried. Uh, played 10 minutes in the first half. Had one shot. Was very limited. Didn't play him in the second half. Uh, came out, couldn't buy a basket. Uh, had shots. Uh, nobody could make it. I think they got off to a 12-0 start. Uh, defense wasn't very good, and as you know, it always happens when they start seeing the ball going. They start making shots they're not usually making. They played extremely well. They had four veterans who were there last year when we beat them. They played really well. Our guys didn't play well. Uh, Dwayne had a, had a good game uh, with Josh not in there. It was really hard time finding a way to score, uh, but really disappointed, uh, especially in the first half. I thought our effort lacked. Uh, second half we came out, played really hard, had to press, got ourselves back into the ball game. Uh, but just couldn't get over the hump. Had plenty of times there we could have cut it to maybe eight or seven. Uh, just didn't make shots and allowed them to come down and score. So uh, very, very disappointed uh, in, in our effort in the first half and, and the way we scored. But uh, we've had injuries. We're going to continue to have injuries. Uh, can't use that for excuse. Somebody's got to step up. And when I say somebody, I mean guys like Shaq. And I mean Darian. I mean Oscar. I need all the, good, uh, the new guys, Darian all those guys to step up and start playing basketball. It's amazing how when you don't hit early on, it seems like it something happens with some players maybe that it gets in your head a little bit and you become almost, you know, you're passing more than shooting. Yeah, well, you know, Jared, uh, I give Jared a lot of credit. I mean, oh, yeah. he was one for 13 or whatever he was, but he never stopped shooting, which all I care about. I mean, he had open shots and uh, some nights they go in and some nights they don't. Um, but the other guys who didn't want to shoot, as you mentioned, uh, there's no excuse for that. Um, not guarding you, you got to be able to shoot the basketball. You got to have confidence, um, and we didn't have that, so that was very disappointing. Um, but we have to bounce back. It doesn't get any easier, uh, obviously, and we just got to find a way to uh, to win ball games. And uh, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, we have uh, you know five guys out right now, scholarship guys Amazing. out, 
and uh, nobody cares but us. <laughs> <laughs> nobody but you nobody and, cares. And, uh, and the GCU Nation. Well, America when I say us, well, that's, yeah. that's the GCU yeah. Nation. I mean, I'm, I'm a big part of that, and I love this university and how they support us. Uh, but there's a lot of people that hope we fail um, because we've gotten so good so quick. And uh, this year we've had so many injuries. It's tough, but like I said, it gives an opportunity for guys to step up. Well, you got to, you know, the resiliency of your players, too, to step up. And Keontae Martin played, uh, Keontae Vernon, rather, played 29 minutes, had had a double-double, 16 points, 14 rebounds. Keontae was good. Keontae, uh, you know, really well, uh, you know, energy, rebounding, um, uh, scored. He, you know, he's been around. He's got to continue to do that. He's got to get better around, finish around the basket. And I, I expect him to probably you know, uh, start now. Uh, he deserves it. And uh, he's just got to keep getting better and better and play better. But uh, he's one of those guys that bring us energy, especially on the uh, on the offensive rebound. It's amazing, too, with the, with the crowds that are here, that opposing teams want to come in here and really silence the crowd. But they also probably feed off of it, too. Well, I told our guys before the game, I said, the great thing is that we get to play in front of this crowd every home game. The bad thing is that teams that come in here get pumped up mm -hmm. because they don't see this kind of stuff. And, uh, they're excited to play in an atmosphere like this because it's it's something they don't see a lot. So we're going to get everybody's best shot. Uh, so that's the negative side of it. But I'd much rather have uh, our side of playing in an energy uh, filled arena like that. But we got to know if teams are going to be extremely excited to play. There's no doubt about it. We are just lifting the lid on the Dan Marley Show. Stick around. Jared Martin will join us as we continue here with the Dan Marley Show. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Jared Martin from the GCU men's basketball team in your redshirt sophomore season. How has the progression gone, not only you know, on this team, but transitioning to America? Uh -huh. uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I love it here. Um, the team's awesome. We get along really well. Uh, Dwayne is probably the key of the, uh, king of that. He's the best teammate <laughs> to have, so he's fun. And then the way we played last year is obviously like a lot of fun. My first year going 27 game, 27 wins, obviously it was a lot of fun. Winning makes everything fun. And then this year, we've had some adversity with injuries and stuff, but uh, I think that just shows who we truly are and our character as a team. And uh, we've started a little rocky so far, but um, as time goes on, we just got to improve, get better. Other people got to step up, myself included, and uh, we'll just get, keep getting better, but I love it here. You know, the team travels to the likes of Kentucky and they went to Louisville and Duke this year. Mm -hmm. What, what are those experiences like? What was it like to go to, to Duke University? Uh, once in a lifetime. I love it. Uh, watching college basketball back home, you see the Duke, the Louisville, the Kentuckys um, on TV and being able to go there and experience it myself was unbelievable. Um, obviously results aren't what we wanted and stuff. And, but uh, to be able to go there, play in front of that atmosphere, the tradition, the history of those schools, it's uh, second to none. And that's what we're trying to build here. And, uh, I think we're taking this like steps in the right direction and we just got to keep building but no those experiences are uh, I'm always gonna remember for the rest of my life I know the havocs are second to none uh, in the nation but I still Definitely. remember an image of the Cameron crazies yeah. reaching over and they I were had, almost yeah, I touching had no you. idea that I, like I, I was thinking in the back of my head because you see the pictures yeah. and the videos and stuff but uh, I didn't see it until that, that actual picture, and it was yeah, it was awesome. It's it's a cool experience. I saw. I think Twitter, all yeah. of Australia saw yeah. that, yeah, that exactly, image, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you've got Louisville coming into town. You've got San Diego State coming back, looking for a little bit of revenge yeah. after you knocked them Definitely. off in their building, and then you travel down to Tucson. So uh -huh. the next next three or four games are going to be pretty tall. Tough, tasks. tough. Yeah, really, really competitive uh, teams and. Teams that are always traditionally really good, top 25 programs, but that's why we're here. We want to play those teams. We want to get to their standard. And uh, we're just going to come in here, fight. Uh, there's, like, we've got nothing to lose. We might as well come in here, give it all we got. And basketball is basketball. You never know. Like last year, we came into San Diego State, upset them. So we just got to come out, listen to Coach Marley, listen to Coach Lee, game playing, performing as best as we can, play as hard as we can, and that's what that's what all we can do and then the results will speak for itself. Sports is somewhat a reflection of life and the obstacles everyone yeah, faces, but exactly. you, you guys are facing some tall some, ones. Yeah, some tall some, ones. They so. are all tall, but no, nah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, how, it's your heart, how, how hard you play. It doesn't matter about size, athleticism. If you play harder than them, uh, you easily can get a win. Injuries are you know, really what we're referring to, and that's one, uh, one of them to you. A gentleman that came over from your native land yeah. in Australia, Matt Jackson. That, that's got to be tough with, with a bad back. Really tough, really tough. And that was the thing. Like I, I'm normally a 2-3 position. I've had to move to the 4 because of Matt and Bubakar. But 
uh, really tough for him. Uh, he was struggling with pain, but uh, hopefully he can get that fixed. And that's basketball, the injuries happen and we just got to step up. The next person's got to come in and then hopefully we get them all healthy for next year and they can come in and have their, have their year next year. But yeah, it's, it's tough so far, but we're learning. We're learning as a new group. Uh, new guys got to step up and that's it. Like, we can't, we can't be looking at the past. We've got to look to the future now. Well, you look to the future and perhaps some of those guys that may have seen limited minutes mm -hmm. are going to be getting yeah. more and more minutes. To, and I'm sure the coaching staff will be able to see who's going to be able to withstand those, yeah. those extra Definitely. minutes. And, yeah, and that's those new young guys. Those young guys got to step up now and they, they're doing it so far, especially in practice. Games are a whole not, another thing because we get the crowd and stuff. But with experience, with a few more games, they're going to they're chugging along and uh, it's, it's fun to see them progress. When you look at the last couple of games, it, it seems like too, like the last game, the crowds are great, but yeah. when a team comes in, they hit a few know, buckets, they, they, they seem to it. like, they, they love it, right? Love it. You so, see them in the warm up, they're getting hyped and yeah. they just want to shut us down. But we've got, to, we've got to learn to combat that. We have to feed off the energy of the crowd because it's amazing. And we have to work off that and build and then start like beating teams, especially at home. We can't lose at home. We let one slide, but with the next couple coming up, let's, we gotta get, we got to get on the roll again. Well, good luck to you, and uh, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Appreciate it. Jared Martin, our guest. Stay with us. More of the Dan Marley Show continues after we take this time out. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Steve Schaefer, the head coach of the men's and women's swim teams here at Grand Canyon University. And wow, it's been a busy couple of months, and it continues right now. you got a team that's in Atlanta at the uh, Nationals. You're headed up to Windsor, Ontario for a con continuing uh, uh, world competition up there, right? Yep. yep. So let's talk about it a little bit about the journey up to this point. You've been to New Mexico State. You've been to Seattle University, Air Force, Northwestern. Where's the team as we sit today? How, how, uh, what's your, your impressions? Uh, we're getting there. We, okay. we came off a really good meet uh, at Northwestern. I thought our guys did very well. The women really improved over last year. Um, we're not you know, ready for conference yet, but, but we put up a lot of good times. Now the uh, 13 swimmers, men and women, qualified for competition in Atlanta. Can you talk about some of those student athletes and what that competition, what they're gonna be facing in Atlanta? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, the short course winter nationals, uh, and there's a mix of teams there. Some club, some college. I think University of Florida is probably one of the stronger teams there. Uh, our kids, we have kids seated as high as third. Daniel Antipov, Mark Nikolayev, in their best events, uh, are seated very well. And then uh, some kids making their first national meet, getting some getting some experience. We've got a couple kids going as relay only swimmers. Our men's relays should do very well. Women's relays, it's their first crack at nationals. We'll see how they do. And it's great because both men and women are represented on, on both sides and, and some of them perhaps their first national competition. Absolutely, yeah. So it's great experience for everybody. Gets us out. It's, way out. it's out in Atlanta on the East Coast, so it's a place where we don't usually go. So it gets our name out there to other people, helps with recruiting. So. And now the swimmers are in Atlanta while the divers are up in Flagstaff. Yeah, they're getting ready to go up the flag here right during the break and they're going to do some practicing up on the 10 meter board platforms up there so they get more platform experience. We were able to get some in at Northwestern, but since we don't have them here, we need to take other opportunities. And I know with Tracy Eldridge as the dive coach, the recruiting process is in its kind of in its infancy, uh, unless you can tell me a little bit different about it, but I know that she's building that program with you alongside as well. Yeah, actually, we, she's doing a great job. We got a really nice compliment from the Air Force coach on how well she's bringing the kids that we have along. We got a very good uh, recruit from Brazil on the men's team this year, uh, Pietro Toscani, and he's doing a fantastic job. He's going to do very well at the conference meet, and so that program's coming along. Uh, you, you don't shy away. I mean, you travel all over the country with your team. You're going to BYU and Provo, and you'll be going to Notre Dame as well. Yeah, that's going to be a rugged invitational at, at Notre Dame this year, this year. Ohio State and Wisconsin are going to be there, so we're going to be walking into a buzzsaw, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see how we do. Why not? Take on the stiffest competition. You know, when I look at your rosters for men's and women's, it, you, you have to see where the student athletes are natives of. From the men's side, Russia, Lithuania, Israel, Egypt, Brazil, Sweden, Ukraine. On the women's side, Poland, Mexico, Bulgaria, Egypt, Ukraine, Sweden, Zambia, Belgium, Lithuania, and Canada. It's amazing. I, I don't know how you do it. It's, is it based on a video? Uh, how is the recruiting process done so well internationally? 
It's all electronic. I answer emails, and uh, kid, no, there's no shortage of kids that contact us. We look at video. Times are on the internet everywhere, so you really don't have to be where they are to know what they can do. And you know, sometimes we take a little bit of a leap of faith, but we've got a kid from Poland coming in that's going to help our men's program this year here in January, and we, we just keep leaving no stone unturned. No doubt. And uh, Zambia, I mentioned Jade Howard is from uh, Zambia, and you were a member of Team Zambia at the recent Olympic Games. It was fantastic. It was, it was a lifelong dream since I watched my first opening ceremonies at the Olympics about 11, when I was about 11 years old, and to be able to do it was a thrill. What was it like to share that experience with Jade? Um, it was great. You know, I'm grateful to Jade and Zambia for letting me have the opportunity to do it. She was you know, she was in her element. That's her second Olympics now. She was in London as well. And wow. She was able to improve on her performances from London, so we were real thrilled with the whole experience. You know, I mentioned Tracy Eldridge's name from, from the dive, uh, diving uh, program, but can you talk a little bit about your support staff as far as your coaches and, and the tireless work and uh, that they put in to, to help these athletes? Yeah, I've got a great staff, probably, you know, one of the best in the country, I think. And Charlie Cunningham, who's a longtime friend and coached club here for a long time, decided to come on basically as our director of performance and really um, he and I have the same philosophies and he's doing a fantastic job in the last two years of really helping the kids you know, step step things up and keeping things you know on, on the platform that we want to do and recording things and keeping track what we do is very labor intensive Takahisi Day has been with me for the longest he's our video expert and both Charlie and Taco are back at nationals I trust them completely to run stuff that's and, nice and then Stacy Siegman has uh, joined us this year as uh, our new assistant this year. She's becoming, she's working at our, our as our recruiting coordinator and kind of learning the ropes this year. And she's doing a great job. It definitely takes a, a support staff and uh, one that you trust. Absolutely, Coach. Yeah. Continued success and good luck. Thanks very much. All Appreciate right, Steve Shea for our guest, the head coach of the men's and women's swim team here at GCU. When we return, an inspirational story from a GCU alum about her purpose-filled, driven life. Stay with us here on the Dan Marley Show. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Competition and obstacles are something we face every day on and off the court. Here's a story about one GCU alum who has faced all of that and overcome them to live a purpose-filled life. I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2013. I had originally moved from Illinois to Arizona in March of 2012. And I had just come out of being extremely athletic as I was a former Illini cheerleader at the University of Illinois. And so as that year had progressed, um, I didn't think anything different of as far as my body, just probably that I was getting older, you know, because 25 was so old. But I actually went in for a pap smear, and that's when they found a large cyst on my left ovary. Once the pathology report came back and it was confirmed that it was ovarian cancer. The Miss Arizona USA pageant was a great experience for me and really healing during my battle with ovarian cancer. It gave me the opportunity to connect with women my age and like I had said, you know, it was a distraction from, from what I was battling. Definitely, I would say it, it was hard competing. I was tired as the treatments progressed. It was, it was getting harder for me to you know, do the normal activities of daily life. I remember too speaking with some people about as far as if I was going to wear a wig or if I was going to just be bald because I was bald and uh, I never really liked the wigs much during any of the process because they were itchy and I was always paranoid that the bangs were weird or it would just like look funny so a lot of times I wore scarves so I actually mixed in all three just to show a variety of fashion but during the actual walk out with the bikini I decided to for the first time with the crowd reveal my bald head so it was a really empowering moment and I think you know it was it was a good moment for everyone in that room, and myself included, just, you know, to say, cancer, you're not gonna define me or defeat me. Sandy, who is now my best friend, which is the manager, the, and she's a nurse at Dr. Wilson's office, she helped me 
create, uh, we co-founded Save Her Life. And the reason that we co-founded Save Her Life was because a lot of younger women don't even know about ovarian cancer. And if they do, they don't think they have anything to worry about because they think it's an older woman's disease. And so we saw it very, that it was imperative to get the word out because my story had actually went national because of the insurance issues and because of the Miss Arizona USA pageant, that story got attention nationally. And I had several women, younger women, contact me and say, thank you, I had no idea. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have known. And they went to the doctor and they found tumors. So it was really fulfilling and Sandy and I saw a gap and a need to continue to raise awareness and through a more powerful outlet would be to start our own foundation. So we started SaveHerLife.org. I went to GCU originally when I first moved here. I really didn't know much about Arizona because I've lived in Illinois my whole life. And I had actually had a friend whose mother was a professor at GCU and I started researching the school and I thought they were a really good school and I liked what they had offered. I liked what they were about. I liked their mission, their platform. And so that's how I got into GCU. And I chose MBA because my undergrad from the University of Illinois was in community health, administration, and planning. Having the two degrees from GCU has definitely been a great asset to my life, both professionally and personally. As far as professionally, as I had discussed earlier, I'm getting my CPA, I'm taking the exams now, so that's a goal for me. And that really gives me an opportunity to do whatever it is that I want. You can't go wrong with a CPA and the knowledge of business. It really provides success in any field that you go in. And Personally, it's helped me grow. It's not only the school and the curriculum, but the people I met along the way and the professors and the encouragement they gave me. And it just has made me into a stronger and smarter person, you know, today, having these two degrees. Congratulations to Christina and all those who are confronted with the fight to battle cancer. Stay with us. More of the Dan Marley Show continues after this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Coach, uh, we wrap things up now, and boy, you couldn't live with a better experience, perhaps. Uh, obviously, you'd love to have a full contingent and a full bench of players, but you've got uh, Louisville was visiting here on, on Saturday evening, then you've got San Diego State on Wednesday. A bit of a, a break before you have to travel down to Tucson to take on an Arizona Wildcats. Yeah, very excited. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a great opportunity for us, but as you said, you would love to be able to go in at full strength and to see what you have, but uh, we don't have that, so we're just going to have to find a way. I told our guys today, just battle. And it gives an opportunity for guys to step up and see what happens, but you would love to go into these kind of games full strength and to see what you could, uh, what could do against uh, one of the best teams in the country. I mean, Louisville is absolutely a big, strong, fast, quick, uh, great team, well coached. So it'll be uh, quite an experience for our guys, and this place is going to be rocking. It sure will. Thanks, Coach. All right, Good thanks. Luck. Yep, thank uh, you. All right, thanks so much for tuning in to the Dan Marley Show.